Okay, I'd like to call to order the regular scheduled meeting of the Elk Grove Park District for August 11th, 2022. We have a roll call, please. President Cook? Here. Commissioner Bietti? Here. Commissioner Carlson? Here. Commissioner Walls? Here. Commissioner O'Malley? Here. Okay, next is approval of the minutes for the committee to hold of July 28th, 2022, as well as the regular meeting of July 28th, 2022. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 That show 5 0. Public communication. Any comments from the audience tonight? I have no comments for you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Correspondence. Do any commissioners have any correspondence? Just the one that Mike Griffin sent to all of us. You know, from Travel Baseball. So we have a correspondence from him and we have a correspondence from the homeowner. Um, about the aquatics. David Millis. Yeah, and then basically the one from uh, Mike Griffiths was regarding... Um, Explaining a new fee that we were going to tack on to their program. Correct, and he showed up at the community hall tonight, and we had good uh, discussion and feedback on that, and we'll be following up to come up with the number that works on both sides for that issue, for that uh, yeah. fee. And based on the other correspondence, Ben was in correspondence with the homeowner that had some lap swimming issues. Okay. And then I think we also touched on issues with the, uh, uh, at the pool, Rainbow Falls. With the tubes? With the tubes. No correspondence on that, yeah. You know, I assume you'll cover that later. Or, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. No other correspondence? Okay, recommendations for acceptance and approval. We have approval of the Athletic Advisory Board member. Uh, I, I move that this individual be appointed to serve a two-year term as an advisory member of the uh, Elk Grove House Baseball Advisory Board, uh, Stephen Micheletti. Any, uh, do I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. second. Yeah, okay. too late. Thanks, Kathy. <laughs> okay, any questions about this uh, recommendation. Okay. We have a roll call, please. Commissioner Becky? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. President Cook? Yes. Congratulations, Steve, and welcome to the uh, House Baseball Advisory Board. Uh, items for information, leisure services update, Tiffany? So over at the Sheila Ray Adult Center in July, we had our big 90th birthday party where we had 16 members celebrating their 90 plus birthday. In July, we had two trips. One of them was to Starved Rock on the Tribute to the Stars. We also had a really popular all aboard cruise ship theme luncheon on July 20th with 60 participants. Over in aquatics, we had 203 total swim lesson participants. That's 59 more than the previous month. We also had 861 aqua wellness participants. In aqua camp throughout the nine weeks of the summer, we serviced 272 total campers. Over in athletics, all of our adult softball leagues are wrapping up and heading into the playoffs. Registration for fall co-ed leagues is currently open. And in July, pickleball, still being as popular as ever, ran a beginner class, uh, maxing out at 17 total participants. Over in uh, youth athletics, we had 406 sports camp campers for the summer. Our new tennis classes are still popular with 25 participants in session two. Hot shots classes had 53 participants and tumbling times had 91. And our Youth Athletic League numbers for the fall um, upcoming sports numbers are up from last year. We have 122 fall softball players, 148 fall baseball players, 21 flag players, and 77 tackle football players. Cheer is at 13 for flag and 44 for competitive cheer. Basketball registration is currently open for the 22-23 season. At Audubon Skate Park, we had 53 skate um, campers this summer and eight private lessons in the month of July. In cultural arts, Guys and Dolls wrapped up their summer camp with performances and there were 386 total tickets sold. And this year their production was held at Oak Grove uh, High School. 
In private music lessons, there were 14 total summer students, and that session is ramping up in mid-August. Right now for preschool, we currently have 125 preschool registrations, and we are still accepting registrations for the upcoming school year. The school week starts August 29th. Well, starts the week of August 29th. Over in fitness, for open gym, we had 424 total paid participants for the month of July, compared to only 383 in June. In the rentals department, um, due to our outdoor facilities, the numbers were up significantly in July. We had 154 total rentals and parties, and then we had two entire park rentals. For our uh, before and after school, that kicked off with Ridge starting their school year on July 28th, and we have two, 22 participants currently enrolled there, and that registration is open at all sites for the 22-23 school year. We had play picnic party this past month, and we had over 2,500 people in attendance at the Candyland theme event. So great job to everyone who came out and volunteered for that event. For our um, youth area, Camp Explorer and Camp Voyager combined for an average of 89 campers per day. We also held our first summer blast pool party for teens. That was July 15th, and there were 86 people in attendance. Now, Scott, the last one was just August 5th, correct? And Irene said there was close to 200? Yeah, there was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the both events were really well received this year. Um, upcoming events. August 20th, we have our beer garden at the museum for ages 21 and older, and that is from noon to 4.30. September 9th, we have our Pirates Cove Family <coughs> Camp Out. We brought this back last year. It was a really popular event, and registration is required for that. And then September 16th and 17th, we have our rummage sale at the Sheila Ray Adult Center, and it runs from 9 to 2 each day. Okay. Any questions for Tiffany? Um, hey, Tiffany, we used to get a report on the uh, fitness center. Uh, second meeting? That comes at the second meeting of the month. Oh, okay. Sounds good. That's my question. Any other questions? Okay, parks and planning. Uh, or, our contractor started this week uh, resurfacing tennis courts at uh, Lindbergh <coughs> and Udall. Uh, when those courts are done, uh, they'll move on to Mead. Uh, we had two new five row bleachers that were installed at CAF. Um, those uh, bleachers will provide better access to all of the rows because of the center aisle that's in there and it uh, is easier to walk up, uh, up and down the, the bleachers. And then as a, uh, a capital update, I'm working with a contractor to schedule the concrete work and shade structure for Solder Point. It looks like it's getting um, pushed later into September, hopefully no later than mid, mid to late September. Um, and then I should have a mock-up ready to present to the board uh, as soon as the next meeting. Um, and then you guys will be able to provide some feedback on that. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. And the only discussion I had on that is um, I know I mentioned this to Ben and maybe a few of the board members on the side. Well, we're going to have Sodders Point set up. It's right in Morton. It's kind of in, it's in Morton Park. And the signage for Morton Park is right in front of where uh, Sodders Point's going to be. So as far as signage goes, um, do we want to, like, shift that signage down and create a separate name? Or... You know, like Saunders Point would be from this point in front of where, uh, like, the, the fishing area is going to be, and then Morton Park would be further down, and signage for Morton Park would be shifted down there. Do you know what I'm talking about? I, 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 the signage. It might be confusing to have Morton Park signage right there where. Well, where I thought Morton Park somewhere. was going to remain Morton Park, where Saunders Point would be the spot that's specifically located well, at guess, the fishing platform. Right. So I guess get there, and there's that shade structure, that area specific area is deemed solder point is what I understood. Right. And I think that's what the consensus original, is. The original thought was. I just I guess would like to do we want to I guess he's saying the two signs are too close. Is there any way Morton Park sign can move down five hundred feet? 
I guess if we're going to have more, if it's all going to be part of more park, or just, are we, do we want to have two separate names, parks? In other words, you still have more park, just that more park would only be further down, and this area down here, <coughs> we could be Sauter's Point that included the fishing and the volleyball or whatever area. Because we don't have a name for that either. No. Anyways. Well, we put it on the community hall. Yes, good idea. So if, let's give that some thought from staff's perspective, as far as signage and also as far as we can definitely what's going to be we the can least. definitely move a sign. No, I understand that. That's all I need for the just, name of the park. park. But well, no, if you want to, because we never when we took over Brantwood, we never decided. We just really left it alone. I remember right. those conversations. Those were right. a while ago. But. And so, well, you should name it Morton Park. I mean, why would you have three different park names in, the, in a quarter mile? In my opinion, it's not. We didn't do anything wrong. I'm just saying. Or you could to have two. Or you could have two. Next to each other. Yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. So let's let's put on the next committee to hold to discuss that. Okay. And just to clarify whether we want to do that and whether that signage needs to be moved or not. Maybe it does. Maybe it does. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, for Tiffany? Uh, we're Mark. on Mark. 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 Or Mark. Sorry yeah. about that. I'll Sorry. Answer. <laughs> Come on, I'm done. Don't pick up. <laughs> okay, business services, Brad. Thank you, President Cook. Uh, it's my favorite time of year. Budget season is officially kicked off. Preliminary interdepartmental meetings have begun. Uh, representative from Patrol was out uh, for Paderma conducting an appraisal on Fox Run Golf Links, the clubhouse and maintenance facility this week. So I met with him. And then, as well with Fox Run, High school trials for this week, both for Conan and Elk Grove. Um, the club championship is scheduled for September 17th. Call the clubhouse for information. Uh, the return of the nine in Stein is scheduled for September 24th. That's a 4 p.m. shotgun and includes nine holes. It's a four person scramble with cart brats and a logo Stein along with beer samples to be served. Um, New also this year is a Halloween scramble that they're going to be doing. It's going to be October 28th. Uh, it's a 2 p.m. shotgun with a two-person scramble. Entry fee includes dinner and prizes, as well as um, individual and team costume awards. Um, other fall events, um, more details to come. The turkey shoot is returning, as well as a new 5K run walk, as well as some fall football promotions as well. Details to come on that. That concludes my report. Okay, so if there are any questions for uh, Brad? Let's do the Halloween one, Scotty. You go as like Chuck Norris or something. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that. No. Okay, <laughs> Kelly, marketing. Yeah, that sounds fun. Um, so the fall guides have been mailed. Registration started for residents on August 4th. Non-residents was on August the 8th. Uh, we started, uh, we have a new staff, our newest staff uh, team member is Laura Polito, and she is our new digital marketing specialist. Uh, she started, oh gosh, two weeks ago now. And we also are um, going to have the customer service desk at the Hattendorf building finish completion by next week. So by the end of next week, we should have our furniture in place for the new reception area at uh, the Hattendorf building. And then last but not least, this is the information everybody is just waiting to hear. We sold 291 ducks and we had our duck race on Sunday and it did uh, was very, very successful. So I appreciate everybody who participated in that, bought tickets and uh, we had probably about 75 or 80 people watching the race, so it was a lot of fun and uh, had a good day. Who won? We had 20 winners. Okay. So a lot of people won. Okay. It's a good percentage, 20 out of 291. <coughs> like Any questions for Kelly? No. Okay, executive director. I have just one quick but very big update, a big thank you to all staff this summer, um, especially the frontline staff who do um, a lot of the hard uh, work outside and the, the people I'm referring to are all our aquatic staff, our Pirates Cove staff, our camp counselors, our cashiers, our 
birthday party attendants, um, all the, the young staff that really make this whole organization move during the summer when we have um, a, lot of, a lot of activity and a lot of excitement and it's really cool to see all the young staff and um, them interact with our public and do just a wonderful, great job and just want to thank them and I know it's not quite over summer, we're almost getting to the end, we have uh, the postseason, but just want to thank them and I appreciate all their hard work. Don't say summer's over. <laughs> I'm crying. Kids are at school. It's not safe, right? yeah. Tomorrow. Okay, any, any questions for Ben? Okay. Any old business? Should be old business. Any new business? Yes, we have adoption of Resolution 22-01, a resolution ratifying the recommend, recommended assessments by the Northwest Special Recreation Association for the calendar year of 2023 and in the amount of $330,485.59. Your motion? So moved. Second. Uh, I'm a little confused on that. I thought we were going back with this checking on something. Okay. All right. Oh, um, they probably wouldn't change it this yeah. fast, this fast. I mean, it's already probably locked in. Oh, okay. His request, or at least the request right. I made, would yeah, be well, something that they'd be discussing. So hopefully, it would lower our price in the next year. If there's a way to look at the equation, you know, the, oh, okay. the seventy-five yeah, twenty-five. I understood what we were. Bill was wondering, Bill was wondering why we couldn't level the equation out a little bit. Correct. Okay. So I mean, if you, yeah, and my my question was on the. Uh, the budget numbers, which Ben sitting on the board, they get that. Mm -hmm. He just didn't give us okay, copies of it. So, so. All right. I'll just I'll provide that next time. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any uh, questions? Discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? No, thank you. Commissioner Vietti? Yes. President Cook? Yes. Okay. And then number nine, a payment of the bills. I uh, need a motion to approve uh, the July 28th, 2022, the amount of $159,363.04. And for August 4th, 2022, the amount of $174,948.51. So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion on the bills? Do we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. Commissioner Bietti? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. President Cook? Yes. Okay, last is a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, roll call please. Commissioner O'Malley? Oh, uh, yes, Kathy, I'm in favor of adjournment. Commissioner Bietti? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. President Cook? Yes, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.